addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the position of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. The context behind this first comment comes from, I'm guessing, from a video or a post having to do with tangibility or non-tangibility of a word, i.e. the tangible contract versus non-tangible contract concepts that I've been teaching for six years as a tool for people to have a, an easier time being able to syntax. But because before I introduced those concepts of tangible contract and non-tangible contract, everyone's syntax was different. No one knew why the was syntax the way it was and, and you know other words and things like that. They had no clue as to why other than so-and-so said so. Or it's on the list of adverbs because so-and-so said so. They never tell you why. And that was my whole issue with the Colin David Ivan Wynn, Colin Miller videos was that, yes, he did tell you for the most part how to do something, but he never said why. He never said why an adverb, why this word's an adverb, and then over here it's not an adverb. Or this word's an adjective and that word's not an adjective. He never said why those things were the way they were. So it was up to me to figure that out. And I never would have been able to figure it out without my own tutor, Colin Raven, hyphen Farhad, hyphen Tohidi, Colin Afarin, who was the individual who introduced those concepts of tangibility and non tangibility into this construct of correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar because before he and i got together and started uh, working on this stuff those words didn't exist within this domain so he brought it to me and i brought it to you basically is how it works and so this is the context of the comment from steve harvey where they say oh you know love please explain love can't wait to hear sick it obviously they're not using the correct plain english term of here it would be h-e-a-r because here h-e-a-r is just ear with an h in front of it but maybe that's something that uh, they can work on they can work on their plain simple english before they try and tackle correct sentence structure It'd be a good idea to have a a grasp on you know, enclosure on the way you already communicate before you move on to something else. But that's just a thought. Anyways, so they're basically trying to argue that love, the tangibility of love as a tangible contract word. So if I say to Steve Harvey that, you know, Steve Harvey, I love my wife. Oh, suddenly Steve doesn't have a tangible contract with what love is. He doesn't know what I mean. Maybe he doesn't know what love is. Maybe he doesn't have that in his life. I'm sad to hear that. But if you take that word love and compare it to a word like the, do you have the same contract with the word love that you do the? Because if you don't have love in your life, then maybe you do. Because the, 
There, I have no tangible contract with what the is. I have no emotional, sensational, first-hand knowledge of what a the is other than it's three letters on a piece of paper. Love, on the other hand, I do have a contract with what that means. I have an emotional, sensational connection to that, a first-hand knowledge of that feeling. The is not a feeling, but feelings are tangible contract. So in Kuliana to, to that, I give closure to what love is from my correct sentence structure dictionary. For the love of this finite mean is with the claim of this life force, with the nativity source of the creation, with the bind of the matter, with the cognition of the sensation, with the certification by this claim. Backwards for this claim of the certification is with the sensation of the cognition, with the matter of the bind, with the creation of the nativity source, with this life force of the claim, with the finite mean by the love, period. And then I correct them on the, on the here, H-E-R-E -E versus H-E-A-R. And then I syntax their babble, and that's it. You know, I mean, individuals like this come here and they'll, they'll say things like that. And it just betrays a complete ignorance of correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. A, an ignorance that could be corrected or could be, you know, the knowledge could be cultivated if they would take the time to learn it, just a thought. This next comment, which I did not publish in the comments field, but I will address here, has to do with the tangibility and non-tangibility of a word. And I'm gonna preface this, which I just already explained basically how one would credential tangibility in an overarching sense, but in a technical sense, the way you would credential tangibility or non-tangibility, it just look the word up that you're studying in an etymology dictionary, doesn't matter which one, go to the earliest nativity root meanings of the, the particles of that word, and if those particles, the nativity root meanings, the earliest meanings of them are tangible, then you would syntax the word as tangible contract. That's the whole point of having this tangible versus non-tangible concept. It's for syntaxing purposes. And no, as I said before, it did not exist before I brought it to the public. I mean, it didn't exist in the public until I brought it to the public in this domain. All right. It was brought to me by my tutor, Colin Raven, and I brought it to you. Now, this individual user, whoever it is, um, obviously haven't really done their research or watched too many videos about this because I do go into great detail and depth explaining this concept and how it came to me through Raven and how why I teach it and what it means. And so the gist of this is, okay, they're copying, pasting something from, I guess, an etymology dictionary. And then... They go on to say, in effect, it seems you, meaning me, Jason, redefined and or made an exception to the terms to include tangible contracts. Um, no. I mean, it may seem that way to you, but that is not what I've done. So number one, from the perspective of one who is clinically diagnosed psychopath is love tangible contract. And then I'm not a psychopath, LOL. See, questions like that have absolutely zero value to me because what do I, what does it matter? I'm not going to make a claim for a psychopath and I'm not a psychologist, so I can't really diagnose someone as a psychopath. I don't have that expertise and the whole field of psychology and psychopathy is all based on assumption presumption from my standpoint. So, is love tangible contract to a clinically diagnosed psychopath? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. But what I do know is that you, you, whoever you are, are giving authority to the fiction because a clinically diagnosed individual is someone who's been diagnosed by the fiction system. 
So if that's your thing, giving authority to the fiction, hey, that's your choice. Number two, how does Jason Matthew Glass physically touch another man or woman's concept of love in order to confirm his tangibility, also known as physicality? Again, this individual is using a fiction etymology dictionary as an authority, the be-all, end-all of their meaning for something. So this individual and I will not be contracting in correct sentence structure because we have different authorities over our grammar. My authority over my grammar is me, not an etymology dictionary. Now, as I've explained ad nauseum, and this individual would, would know this if they'd study a little bit further, I use etymology dictionaries, Webster's 1828 dictionary, all sorts of different dictionaries as a continuance of the evidence for the finite means and meanings that I use in my dictionary. However, they are not the authority of it. So if I go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of what a word means in an etymology dictionary, does not necessarily mean that that particular meaning is going to be the meaning that's in my dictionary. I craft it with the balance of the honor and the grace to fit the contracts that I need to perform on. And I choose the best meanings that will last across every single contract I have. One and one is one. So if I have a finite meaning for the word love, that finite mean will carry over from this contract to that contract to this contract to that contract across the board. It will never change. It will be the same. There won't be different meanings for the word love or tangibility for that matter. So a little bit more study and your ignorance, you may find your ignorance dissipating, whomever you are. And then number three, they say, you state that you and your students use this syntax technique. Did the late Cole and David Eiffelwin, Cole or Miller make any mention directly or indirectly or indirectly of this technique in any video? No, he never did. Because as I mentioned a short time ago in this, in this video that you're watching right now, that concept did not exist until I brought it to the public. I will eventually be a correct grammar student to you. Well... I won't hold my breath, but thank you for sharing at least your first name, Tony. Maybe one day you will get the, uh, the gumption to step up under the geometric level playing field of contract and share your full correct name and stand behind your words and hold a position. But until that time or until you contact me for, to apply for a workshop, I wish you well. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Monica Rilliford, and they say, Hi there, Jason. Be a doll face. By hyphen which, please, for me, syntax following sentence for the S-H-I-T-S's and giggles of it. And then in brackets, using a symbolism as holy acts, that is idolatry, end bracket, with my thanks to you. Okay. It appears as though Monica is telling me to be a doll face. And as anyone knows who's been watching this channel for any length of time, that violates the terms and conditions of this vessel in that they're trying to tell me what to do. So no, I'm not going to be a doll face. But thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from someone named Stump Grinder, and they say, I like your content, but hate the filter, can't focus on it, keep it simple, buddy, you got this. No need to do all the extras. And then I give Cooley on it and I say, hmm, you didn't bother to read the terms and conditions of the comments field before you posted this, did you, buddy? The day I take YouTube advice from a YouTuber with 33 subs and an average of 42 views per video with 15 videos posted over about three years is the day I stop using filters on reposted TikTok videos. Welcome aboard, stump jumper. I'll look past your ignorance this time. Next time, please educate yourself in the terms and conditions of the vessel you're a guest of. Thank you. And then they responded back a few times talking about what terms and conditions, imaginary terms and conditions, blah, blah, blah. Well, they displayed their own ignorance uh, by saying that because the scrupulous YouTuber will know that when you click on a box 
a text box to comment, there will be another box that pops up about community guidelines. And all you have to do is click on that and that will give you the terms and conditions of the channel you're commenting on. Now those terms and conditions may be written by YouTube or as in my case, I wrote my own community guidelines, which you can read if you're smart enough to do that and considerate enough to do that, which Stump Jumper is uh, apparently by their own admission, ignorant of both of those things. So in any case, I gave back the energy that they brought. And just to comment on what he's talking about, or she, I don't want to misgender them. Um, I post a lot of times in the shorts video section of this channel. I repost TikTok videos that I do. And on TikTok, I use filters, which like I use a 70s filter that looks like a bad VHS tape. I use smoke filters because... That helps get views on on TikTok. And then I repost the content here because I know a lot of YouTubers don't go to TikTok. So again, you know, Stump Jumper, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's pretty simple. Nobody's twisting your arm to be here, bro. Next comment comes from a member for the claimant. Thank you for your membership. And they say, Alchemists wrote of the search that apostrophe is incorrect there. You wouldn't need to have that there. It would just be alchemists, plural, without the apostrophe. Wrote of the search for the Philosopher's Stone, Basilius Valentinus. Okay. You know what, though? Uh, I, don't, I don't feel I should have to apologize for this, but it's just like grammatically a lot of times things will jump out at me. And that's why I criticize, even in plain English, I will criticize things like that undeeded apostrophe, just because that's that's how I'm wired. Now, I will say that uh, in response to the Philosopher's Stone and alchemy and things like that, I have done extensive studies um, regarding alchemy. And one of the uh, best writers about the subject, in my humble perception, is a man named Fulconelli who wrote one of his books was called Mysteries of the of the Cathedrals. Now, supposedly that book was written like you can read it for its surface value, but there's a lot of esoteric symbolism embedded in that book if you have the keys, i.e., do you know what the keys are? The 78 keys positive and negative. I mean, if you know what those are, then you can read that book and uh, glean some information from it that maybe the normal individual wouldn't know. The normal individual who does not have knowledge of these 78 keys. Um, as you may or may not remember, Cola David Ivan Colin Miller claimed to be a key master, and I was fortunate enough to glean from his videos and also, you know, from other things, what he meant by that key master to be a master of the keys now in order to be a master of something you have to have knowledge of it authority comes from knowledge so if that's the case then I am aware of the 78 keys I have studied the 78 keys for probably about seven years now I don't know if I would publicly claim to be key master but I'm definitely a key steward <laughs> But I know about that stuff, so I'm just bringing that to you as sort of a side thing. If you're interested in alchemy and stuff like that, Fucanelli, Mystery of the Cathedrals. Okay, so to continue on here, the turning of the base metals to gold with the idea that sulfuric acid would dissolve all metals except gold, hence the acronym vitriol, visita interiora terra rectificando invenies occultum, Lapidem, visit the interior of the world and rectify, purifying, you will find the hidden stone. Now knowing the Proto-Germanic root of the word world is W-E-R, meaning man, visit the interior of the man and purify in order to find the hidden stone. Of course, because it's not hidden. None of it's hidden. It, it, it appears to the ignorant or the profane to be hidden, but it's not hidden. It's never been hidden. Uh... 
You just have to know how to do these things. Another comment from Monica Relaford, and they say, just consider people. I've been studying since 2018, and for sure, you're not going to see me trying to teach or represent. I'm too ghetto. Trust and believe. Colon mean hyphen while colon space for the claim of my document is with the delivery fee federal postmaster for the docking of my document for the correct port authority. All right, so uh, just to touch on a couple things in this comment, I've been studying since the summer of 2017. I began teaching in February of 2018. So not even a year later, I was, te I was starting to teach this stuff. So everybody learns at different paces, for sure. Um, and the bottom part, that is not a correct sentence structure. It starts off good with, I mean, the colon mean hyphen while colon, we're going to leave that out. Uh, we're just going to go from the FOR forward. So we have for the claim, which would be the cause of it. And what is the claim concerned with? Their document. Singular verb is moving into the possessive with the delivery. So DE is no. That's a particle of negation. So you wouldn't use that in a fact. You could just use the word livery. That's what I do. So possessive, the library is possessing document. Oh, we have doc delivery fee federal postmaster. None of those are hyphenated, which throws the entire thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, not to mention... There are three causes in the sentence, and it does not end on an authority, and it's missing a loadio at the end, and it's a lot of mistakes. And I can just say to uh, Monica, I mean, if you want to learn this stuff, you can contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and apply for a workshop. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute consult. But you have to give Kuliani. You have to take that step. You have to galvanize yourself to move forward with this. Next comment comes from Darren Genius of Patterns. Darren Genius of Patterns. Okay. Timestamp. Thanks, Jason, for the closure on what license means. A paid permit to do something that would otherwise be illegal. That is correct. That is correct. Because that's exactly what it is. Because think about it. We're talking about the legal system here, the fiction system. If you don't have a driving license and you drive your car around and you get pulled over, that's considered illegal. But if you have a license, now it's legal and you won't get in trouble. You won't get sanctioned. Same thing with hunting or anything else. That's how the fiction system makes their money and coerces individuals into doing, you know, accepting that imaginary authority. I mean, on the one hand, you could say, well, without that, then the world would be chaos. There are these people that say, you know, well, if you didn't have the police and you didn't have this and that and the third, then, then it would be chaos. Who would you call for help if your house was being robbed or whatever? Well, there was a time, folks, when people fended for themselves, when people took care of themselves, and it was up to each man and woman to protect and provide safety for their own family. And then they would get together in communities, and everybody would watch each other's back, and the bad eggs would get thrown out. And then that just developed and mutated into what we have today, which is government, which now, those that are supposedly supposed to protect the people, now control the people and coerce the people and bully the people. And so I say, bring the chaos. I don't need a police department. I really don't. I mean, I have honor and respect for those peace officers that do their job and are truly there to protect and serve. But I have no honor for those officers out there that are making money enforcing policies. F that. So now we have another one from Monica Relaford, and they say, for this duty of this volition is with this claim of the motion 
of the fact now known by the thinking verb, and then they put their name in all caps. Uh, okay, I'm not even going to read that last one. Uh, so to look at our sentence structure up here, again, it starts out strong like her other one. However, we have the word motion. M-O is no contract. It means to push away. So you would not use particles and negations in your fact. And then you precede the authority with a concern, which is incorrect concatenation. So your positional sequencing is not correct. And you have a particle of negation in the word thinking. I-N-G is a particle of negation. Next comment comes from member for the claimant. And they say, copyright relates to the physical creation, not to concepts or ideas affiliated with the work. Copyright protection stops others from copying, adapting, distributing, renting, or performing that particular work without prior permission from the author. But how can you adapt or perform something without first having closure on the mechanics? Also, if a copyright is held in a fictitious conveyance of grammar, does it actually say anything? Dave Windmiller brought this technology forward on April 6, 1988 with open ears to all that wanted to contribute and better the function of this technology. It is obvious to anyone who looks for themselves. Rave it in yourself, covered all the bases, given a logical closure and multiple unknown left unanswered. You both, you have both held honorable positions, never claiming an authority over others, instead teaching those with a humble, peaceful volition to self-govern. By govern, I mean to pilot and steer their own vessel. In my eyes, the beauty of correct sentence structure was always the freedom from any overseeing corpus, the ability to navigate freely, and do no harm completely altered my world perspective, bringing me joy, enthusiasm, and gratitude for every day I'm blessed to wake up and love. Those who seek to be leaders are usually not meant for the position. Stoic philosophy has been a huge benefit to my psychology. Thumbs up to Stoicism. Working hand-in-hand hand with my use of the correct sentence structure technology, it's extremely unfortunate that individuals can't see or gain cognition of what is achievable when they think for themselves, instead of looking for someone else to follow. As I like to say there, uh, for the claimant, I mean, when I read that sentence, you say, it is extremely unfortunate that individuals can't see or gain cognition. I'm guessing you're saying for yourself it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for you. Because as correct sentence structure claimants, we wouldn't presume that it's unfortunate for someone else. So that's why when you hear me say things like in a, that in a video, like if it were me saying that, I would say it's unfortunate or perhaps fortunate, depending upon where you're sitting, that individuals can't see your gain cognition. You see what I did there? I correct myself as I go because I'm not going to, I'm trying my best not to make presumptions and assumptions for others and try to only speak for myself. But I do agree with uh, most of what you said here. Very thoughtful comment. Thank you very much. Next comment comes from Dennis Thompson and they say, hello, Jason, another great video from my point of view that mind blowing knowledge level held by yourself with basic English to correct sentence structure and all in between. A grammar question, I think they mean grammar question, but to frame the context of this, my sensation seeing videos of David's created correct sentence structure from past Freemason church elite documents building and repacked, fixed it into correct sentence structure I first saw in 2015-ish. My sensation seeing videos of David's created correct sentence structure from past Okay, um, that is your sensation, Dennis, for sure, because I never got that sensation, because I don't know of any texts that you're talking about. So if you do have Freemason Church elite documents and texts that form the basis of correct sentence structure, please share that with us. Because in my, you know, I've been studying since the summer of 2017, seven years or so, um, I've never seen such a thing. So maybe you have. So if you have, please share it. Send me an email with links to those documents or texts, or at least the names and authors of those texts, because I'd like to see them. 
Did David have a grip over the grammar as he put forth in his videos? Okay, so that's not really a grammar question. Um, it has nothing to do with like the mechanics of the grammar. It has to do with speculation on making a claim for David Wynn Miller, and I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to make a claim for someone else. What I can tell you is that I can show you in David Wynn Miller's book and on his website, his original website, that there are tons and tons of errors all over that. Now, publicly, does that show? What What is it? Okay, let me phrase it a different way. So in the public, with those publicly available documents, his book and the website, not to mention other things that he's written, it publicly shows his level of knowledge. Let's put it that way. Just like the video, uh, the documents that I put in some of my videos and things like that publicly show my knowledge level. Unfortunately or fortunately, David is not here to talk about this. So I'm not going to speculate on it. I can say that with 100% certainty that in his book and on his website, it shows a lack of closure on the grammar. And I could speculate on the reasons for that, which I have already done. And again, as I said, I'm not going to do it here. Or a work in progress, not trying to bring him down to me. His views and insights showed the biggest hole missed by all in the fight for right, wrong, and how man can make a difference. Here's the thing about fighting. When you fight or take the stance of fighting, now you're a fighter, and that's what you're going to get. I realized years ago that if I take that particular concept out of my psyche, like the, the concept of being a warrior or fighting, once you take that out and you take a position of peace and neutrality, things fall into place much, much easier, and things turn out much more in a much more positive way. Because if you're always struggling and fighting, then that's what you're always going to get. There's never going to be peace. Ever. It's all pretty much here. As my context has been 90% common law, Carl Lentz, USA style, 10% legal with Bill Turner, New Zealand up to that time. Now yourself and team equals grammar, friends, Raven, etc., English, Spanish, etc. How much work, rework have all of you done making it bulletproof? Well, it's not bulletproof. Nothing is bulletproof. Um, it all depends upon you. Are you bulletproof? Is your knowledge level bulletproof? How confident do you feel about it? That's how this works. It all depends upon the user, Dennis. It doesn't depend upon the technology. It depends upon you. You are the most important component when using it. Because if you don't have closure on it, and you don't know what you're doing with it, then just like using a firearm or something like that, you're going to get someone else hurt and probably yourself hurt too if you don't know what you're doing. That's the most straightforward way I can put it to you. Just a little history from you, if you would like to say, and others say it's okay to it. My story. Dennis. Uh, I'm not sure what they mean. Are they saying that they have modified their name a few times or what? I don't know what that means. Now my growth life, I am happy to be corrected, humbled in the legal world, Australian government documents, Dennis Michael Thompson, as computer will not let me have colon within the name, but Dennis Michael Thompson controls the legal name. And now in common law, I am Dennis Michael, owning both the others. Now I'm leaning to Dennis Michael Thompson. I remember David saying, quote, mind us, mind use hurts, etc. Just want some grammar history as to correct sentence structure becoming what it is today. Going from David, one, two, three, with all the equal grace, which to me has now locked my sights to wanting and knowing this is right for me. I hope from past texts 
to now I hope you think I have improved some. I say now thank you. Not meaning you have to answer, but is my sensation of good manners. Dennis Michael Thompson. Well, thank you for the comment. I, I have no clue as to whether you have improved or not because I don't see any evidence of correct sentence structure in your comment there. You're not syntaxing anything. You're not writing in a mathematical interface. Um, you're just writing in plain, simple English, which is fine, which is fine. I appreciate you sharing all these things uh, for sure. Um, if you want the history of correct sentence structure, Dennis, that would be up to you to do. I'm not a history teacher. And I, ho I hope you're not taking this like in a negative way. I'm a grammar tutor, and I do give a history of my journey, which if you look up the word journey on my YouTube channel, I think you'll be able to pull up those videos where I do give a little bit of a history of how I started. I'm not going to speak for David or anyone else, though, right? It's not my place to do that. If you want to study those things, if you want to go back on, on the Internet, and look up court cases, look up old videos, old websites, and things like that, you're more than welcome to put the time in and do that, because I had to do that. That's all I've been doing since I started doing this, was looking up people, researching history, and court cases. Thousands of hours, thousands and thousands of hours. You just got to put the, you just got to put the now space in. What you put in is what you get out. Thank you for the comment, man. Final comment comes from Dennis Thompson, and they say, Hello, Jason. I'm wanting knowledge of what a trust count is, as I only at this time think I might know, but wanting your definition meaning. Your 1111 quote in ref to Janus. I don't know what that last sentence means. However, I can definitely give you closure as to what a trust count is. Like, you know what an, an account is, right? A bank account what do you put in a bank account? You put value in it, right? Whatever that value might be. Fiat currency, for example. Well, I take the AC away and use the word count, meaning instead of bank account, it's bank count, bank hyphen count. All right, which is a place where I put value. Now, a trust count is a place, is also a place where I put value. However, I don't put money in there. I don't put fiat currency, gold, silver, or real estate, anything else in there. The only thing I put in there is trust. So the more I communicate with someone in the confidential, the more I get to know them, and the more they perform in a certain way with the balance of your honor and the grace and so on and so forth, now we're investing trust in this account, in this account. And the more trust you put in there, the more trust you and I have. So hypothetically speaking, for example, Raven and I have a trust count. And I trust him implicitly with anything and everything. I have no doubt that he would not betray me. Right? And so it, that's what a trust count is. Instead of banking a value of like monetary value, gold, silver, fiat currency, real estate, anything else, precious metals, it's trust that's banked. And it's very important to do that in order to contract with correct sentence structure with the people around you in your biosphere. I mean, of course, you can contract with people you don't trust. But in the end, that's probably going to come back and bite you in the butt. And the only individual you have to blame for that is you for not vetting the other contract party. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button, and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, 
you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions. And we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you. Thank you.